can see we've switched cars um, to give a different um, over the shoulder perspective. So hopefully you'll be able to see your head movements from mirror checks and uh, gear changes. And possibly not uh, what my feet are doing. But hopefully it'll give a clearer view of what we're doing and when we're doing it in relation uh, to the rain events. Okay, so our intention at the next roundabout is to go ahead, which is effectively um, a 12 o'clock exit, so it's a second, second exit. So using the clock face principles as our guide, we would approach in the left-hand lane, so mirrors considering a signal but not signalling because we're taking the second, not the first exit. Position is in the left-hand lane with a speed phase now, taking the gear for that speed and flowing on. There's our gap. And then flowing round, left mirror, left signal. And exiting into lane one of the two, just checking for buses. Again, we're going to go ahead at this next roundabout. So it's a second exit again, same principle. Flowing on. Left mirror, left signal. Exiting into lane one, but seeing it's blocked, checking the mirrors, signalling and moving out early. So we'll go full circle on this uh, roundabout. So mirrors, signal, we're already positioned into the right hand lane, we had no choice today because of the road work cones. for our gap. I'm going to short shift it up into second before I go on to the roundabout so I'm now in a gear that will take me all the way through the hazard. Approaching this whole road work section with caution now for anyone working or anyone confused by the road work diversions. Speed's getting really loud. And that's the exit before the one we want to take so I'm checking my left mirror and shoulder signal Final mirror and shoulder checks before moving the car and exiting into lane one of the two lanes. Answer the signal, now all four wheels are in. Get the car up to speed. The roadworks come to an end. Our intention at the next roundabout is to go ahead, which is effectively a 12 o'clock exit. We're using the clock face convention. We will approach in the left hand lane, but won't signal at this stage because there is an exit, so that's exit one. We're going to exit here, so left mirror, left signal, be mindful of buses pulling out, cancelling our signal. Again, at this roundabout we're going to go ahead, which is the second exit. So, mirrors, considering a signal but not signalling because we're going ahead. Position is the left-hand lane, we've got the speed right, we can gently flow on. There's the exit before the one we want. Left mirror, the left signal. Bring the speed up now, bring the gas up. Final check in the right hand mirror, check we're not being overtaken. Take your higher gear for economy. So at the roundabout, our intention is to take the second exit, go ahead. So using the clock face principles, um, it's a 12 o'clock exit, so we won't be signalling on approach. So we'll be checking our mirrors, so we've considered the signal but won't be signalling because we're not taking the first exit to the left. We've positioned it into the left hand lane in the speed phase now, so I'm on the brakes, actively looking for my gap to the right, but firstly checking that the cars ahead of us have cleared. Taking second gear. There's the opportunity to flow on. So the clutch is back up before we cross the, the giveaway line. And the road around. Left mirror, left signal. Be mindful of the bus stops. Exiting into lane one, cancelling the signal once we're into the lane. Our intention at this roundabout is to turn left first exit. So centre mirror, left mirror, left signal. Position is already in the left-hand lane. We're in the speed phase now. We can 
keep the car, the momentum in the car in second gear. Leaving the signal on, reapplying it. Final mirror check on exit. Go full circle. So mirrors, signal. Be mindful, this is a bit of an unusual um, manoeuvre. Quite acceptable in the highway code, they prefer not to do it for mini roundabouts, but as long as you've got a centre disc, but just do it slowly, get eye contact with any, any other drivers you meet. Roundabout, we're going to take the left first exit. And we can see the roadworks sign in the blockage. I'm checking my mirrors, putting a signal on before moving the car into the right hand lane. And at the next roundabout, our intention is to go ahead. So normally we'd be approaching this clock face, 12 o'clock exit to Redbridge and Tottenham. We'd be approaching in the left-hand lane and keeping out wide. Today, because of the roadworks, that option isn't available to us. So we're approaching the right-hand lane, but not signalling because we're going ahead. We're not turning left, we're not turning right. Rolling first gear, so we're ready. There's a gap opening. Let's drive on. Second gear now. And checking our mirrors and signals so we delayed our gear change until we were across the jaws of the the onslaught there and behind the other uh, uh, behind the center disc so then we could uh, overshoot and come into the side of us without us having forward drive defensive driving technique the road works come to an end here and the speed limit will increase to 40 miles an hour Checking the mirrors to make sure nobody's about to overtake us as we leave the 30 limit, which they're not today. We're getting our head, our eyes are good luck all the way down the road. We'll leave it in third gear because we can see that the traffic lights are red. So if I just come off the gas now, there's nobody um, I need to be showing brake lights to particularly. They all have a view of the traffic lights that we do. We're a relatively small car, it's not like we're a larger vehicle. the option if we'd wanted to of using the right hand of the two lanes to make a little bit more progress but uh, there's not uh, a huge queue of traffic today so generally driving on the left is the default, default position and so if this lane is clear we should be using it three mirror sweeping looking for Bob and Tom cyclist and motorcyclist Short shifting now into second, so we're in a gear clutch up driving through the hazard in case anyone were to pull out. We then have everything on the gas pedal and can have a burst of acceleration if we needed it. Now approaching the roundabout towards the Ordnance Survey head office. And our intention at that roundabout is to take the first exit. Signs as we can just see here behind the hedgerow, M271 and M27. So, centre mirror, left mirror, left signal. Position is to the left hand lane. We're in the speed phase. And actually, speed and gear are fine. They just dropped off naturally. Third gear in this car is fine to flow. And at the next roundabout, our intention is to go ahead. So, 12 o'clock exit. We look at the floor markings we can see that ahead in this middle lane it's also acceptable in the right hand lane though as there is not heavy traffic today um, say normal convention would be that we take the left hand of the two head lanes it's in this middle lane again short shift before we cross the giveaway line so we're in a nice positive drive left mirror left signal as we intend to take the next exit. Having a quick look at the condition of the motorway below. <clears throat> and we can just see the on-slip to the roundabout from the off-slip rather. Onto the roundabout. Check nobody's overshooting that. And here are our dotted lane line markers that neatly flow us. So at the roundabout we are going to go full circle so centre mirror right mirror right signal waiting till the hatching comes to an end before moving the car but checking if he's going down outside I'm observing that driving on taking to the centre disc and checking the lorry left mirror and shoulder left 
signal, we're going to exit directly into the middle lane as we intend to go ahead to Lords Hill. Lights are currently green, checking the mirrors in case they should change. Driving on. That's the exit before the one we want, so left mirror, left signal. Checking the mirrors, gently bringing the car to a stop at the traffic lights. because of the road working going on here. Taking to the centre disc just as we normally would, this is the route we'd take anyway even if it wasn't for the cones. The only thing that becomes a bit different is as we mirror and signal now, normally we'd be moving across to where the cones are but we just have to stay out a little bit wider, a little bit longer and exit centrally. New road, new mirrors, no lights ahead, checking the mirrors. They've got space to come through, so I don't really need to change my course to keep in the near side, but they've got plenty of room, we're not inconveniencing them. Checking the mirrors before moving back out. Two-cane crossing was obviously clear. A little tip there is if you have a look at the um, pedestrian box where they push, where the pedestrians push the button, there is a ring of lights around the button that is pressed, it, it indicates that somebody has recently pressed it. So even if there's nobody waiting there, so again looking at this next two can crossing, you look at the box, we can see the red person and bicycle are illuminated, but the button is not illuminated. So um, it's a good indication that they're not about to change. The same principle as we approach the next set we can see from some considerable distance i can't actually see if there are any pedestrians waiting on the left hand side um, but i can see the right hand box and i can see that it hasn't been pressed so i'd be surprised if we find uh, when my view clears i'd be surprised to find any pedestrians on that side and no there aren't frequently scanning the mirrors through here We're down sub 20 miles an hour. Keen cyclist would 
could uh, very easily catch up with us. Or a motorcyclist might be making, wanting to make a little bit more progress through the traffic and filter down the uh, that in the outside. The white van parked to the near side. We can see under it, but its lights have just flashed. And we got the pedestrian. It's not looking across. So there is the pedestrian now crossing. I thought they were going to use this crossing point and we can see the white van that we were talking about. The uh, chap in high visibility is working to the side door. Chances are if he delivers quickly to this house he'll be looking to move off by the time the lights change. Three mirror scan. Checking the mirrors, even just away from them, they're on the telephone. With a second gear driving through the hazard, and then we can take that to third gear. Brake lights are coming on from the car ahead, so we've taken the higher gear, but we're not applying any gas, so we're just letting speed naturally fall away. This car is slightly older than um, our training car, and so the gearing, um, gearing on more modern cars is geared more for economy. Um, so this car has a significantly more retardation if you if you um, come off the gas it will retire whereas in a more modern car the gearing tends to keep the car moving a little bit so every car is every car is different in that respect Getting a view of the route marker board, and we can see there's a crossroads ahead. The General Hospital is off to the left, Shirley is straight ahead, and the city centre and the docks are to the right. That's where we'll be heading. But so, knowing where the hospital is, it's a good indication of where the ambulance would have come from. So, we're delaying our right hand signal until we're level with this junction. And now popping the right hand signal and having checked the mirrors before moving the car into the right hand of the three lanes. Tires and tarmac on the AA van ahead. Again, it's a no windows through that vehicle. Frequently scanning all three mirrors. Having a good look around us. Pedestrian crossing, um, so the road we're turning into on the right has a pedestrian crossing at the traffic lights. So at the moment there are no pedestrians using the crossing, but we just need to be aware of all those type of things. It's all quite busy at the moment. So we can see a solid round green light, which and there is no filter light on as yet, so it's quite acceptable for us to cross the stop line. wait for the white BMW to turn across our path. Hmm, okay, they seem to be stopping, but the filter wasn't on. The brake lights are coming on, so we're checking the mirrors, we're off the gas. As you can feel the car is gently shedding its momentum. Around checking the mirrors. We're going to keep the car rolling if we can. Trickling forward so we can actually leave it in third gear. There's plenty of response if we need to move it forward rapidly. Okay, it's understanding the flexibility of each gear. The lights are changing. Okay, checking the mirrors, we're going to come to a stop. Again, just keeping the head moving, being aware who's coming up, potentially coming up, uh, filtering to the left and right. Bob and Tom, boy on his bike, teenager on the moped. Quite 
quite legitimately any motorcyclist could be looking to filter through. We drive through the hazard in first gear and take it up into second once we're clear of the hazard. This blue Civic may want to come back across so I'm not going to accelerate and go up there inside. If they did want to move back into lane one, we mustn't undertake. So we're going to the traffic lights, which are currently green, and we can get our first uh, view of Millbrook roundabout uh, the route board. And we're going to pause at these lights, which will give us a chance to have a good look at that route board. And our intention is to turn right for the M, following signs for the M271, the west. Red Bridge and Totten, three mirrors sweeping, but interestingly, if we look at the lane markings, M271 to the board here, M271 to the west can also be approached in either the, this left hand lane or the right hand lane. So clearly it's a it's a busy roundabout, it's a big roundabout, so they've got two lanes to move a larger volume of traffic. So normal clock face principles would dictate that we would uh, use the right hand lane and take to the centre disc. Um, but this spiral type roundabout gives us specific lanes and specific lane markings to follow. The key thing is, to having selected the right lane, which we've done, is to remain within that lane as we go round and round about and not cross lanes. That's the key danger point. So, bring the car to a stop. It's quite handy that we've got this pause. Actually be going around this roundabout rather than close to the centre disc which would be normal convention for turning right we're actually going to be taking the outer edge the outside edge of this roundabout and following it all the way around the outside there'll be another lane which is effectively the middle lane which will be alongside us and that will also be potentially exiting the 271 and 271 direction and then the, the inner um, lane nearest the centre disc is actually going all the way around to the A35. Checking our mirrors. A little bit ahead of the uh, traffic sequence there. Obviously, there's a number of set of lights here, so wait out of gear until the amber light comes on again. If we were shunted from behind and we're in gear and our foot jumps off the clutch, we then start driving into the, the danger zone. And on a stop start car, which this one isn't, it also gives us some environmental benefits. Three mirror sweeping. So we follow round, keep to this outside lane, which you can see is M271, as is the middle lane. So we're now at the outside edge of the disc and obviously normally you exit roundabouts from the outside edge so we could be exiting here but we're not following round M271 but we are exiting now so left mirror at the left signal Just checking for anyone crossing the lanes mistakenly the black car has come round in the outside of those two lanes new road new mirrors speed limit now becomes 40 miles an hour and this is actually a lane gain so whilst I'm checking my right hand mirror um, and right hand shoulder for anyone looking to cut back in to this lane we can remain in this lane and now as you can see from the route board if we stay in this lane we can exit onto the M271 Lane line markings confirm that we are in that lane. No real need to confirm that, it's obvious from our road positioning. 
again interestingly here if you look at the floor markings either of these two lanes can go to the right to the M2271 and then to the M27 so traffic is light today we would only use the, the outer of the two lanes if traffic were heavy or if there was an advantage to be had if there was a particular slow moving vehicle but for the purposes of today we can use the outside, the left hand of these two M271 lanes. Holding our signal at this stage, because there was that final junction there, but now left mirror at the left signal. Got siren blue lights, just checking where they're going. Cancelling the signal, keeping out the hatched area. As soon as the wheels are straight, we're going to take the third gear to move over left mirror at the left signal moving over and we're going to exit to Lord's Hill So the inner lane is free, so we'll take that one. Three mirror sweep, move the car on. Short shift there to second, give us a nice flexible view now hopefully. So from this lane we could either exit down to the uh, the next exit, but that's not our intention, so we've kept the signal on, we've kept a right hand signal on, confirmed that we intend to come on round, and now we change that left signal to the right signal, and take second gear once we're clear. Somebody's mowing the grass there. A bit of momentum in the car, so we can just bring the clutch back up again. No need to stop, mirror sweep, exit into lane one of the two. And then that car alongside us is followed round in the inside of the lane. So we have those two lanes. Similarly on this one, we're going to turn right to Lord's Hill, but we can do that in this centre lane. We can speed out. Right-hand signal helps this person understand that I'm turning, following on round, but now I've changed the right signal to a left signal before exiting. circle at this roundabout, so mirrors, signal, position into the right hand lane, in the speed phase now, so we're bringing the speed down on the brakes on approach, gap isn't opening for us, now we're going to stop because that vehicle's towing, I uh, don't want to cause it any concern, probably was a large enough gap for me to flow on but given that it was towing a vehicle, 
didn't want to startle the driver and cause it to brake harshly and upset its uh, load. So that was the exit before the one we want to take. So we're now checking our mirrors, putting a signal on. Normally we'd be moving across into the left-hand lane, but again the cones delay that move to this point. Checking the crossing is clear. This is going to stop. Potential for the bus to stop. Checking the mirrors, checking they'll be walking across for the three weeks to get off another bus. handbrake take it out of gear so again that's for safety so now if I was shunted from behind um, if you're shunted and your foot slips off the clutch pedal when you're in first gear you then jump forward into potentially oncoming traffic and then also on more modern cars which have a stop start mechanism by taking it out of gear and coming off the clutch the engine stops running we don't have that uh, technology on this older car we move the car forward we can see the second set of lights have turned green Changing into second gear as soon as we're clear of the crossing, but not before. Final look down the uh, right hand mirror for anyone on the last overtake because there are two lanes there and a zip merging lane. That's where we there. I need to adjust my speed for. You head now to the, uh, the next roundabout in the ordnance survey. It's going quite briskly. Centre mirror, left mirror, left signal. Position is to the left hand lane. Speed phase now, getting the speed right down. We've got one car coming around, so we're going to wait for them. Take the gear, gently flow on. New road, new mirrors. We're going to take the first exit left, M271. Lights are changing. motorway regulation Checking the 
left mirror, left signal, move it across. Road narrows from our side, so because we have moved to the left hand lane, where there is some narrow road, and we will take our first exit to the left. So uh, centre mirror, left mirror, left signal. So we've got some pedestrians crossing there. Tires and tarmac on the mini ahead. Again, secure the car. We're going to be here for a while. We can cancel the signal to avoid it becoming a distraction and irritation to us. But it's important that we tell people where we're going. So imagine a cyclist coming down our inside. So before we move the car, when we prepare the car, when we get the, the amber light, we're going to put the car into gear. We'll do a three mirror sweep and then put our signal on. We should have plenty of time to do all of that. We're frequently mirror scanning now. So, three mirror sweep. Put that signal on, check down the inside before turning to the left, short shift into second, looking to the right, you've obviously got the block of the HGV there, and we're going to take this first exit, 30 mile an hour speed limit, immediately got another roundabout ahead, so checking it's clear to the right, left signal on exit for the benefit of the van opposing and the one behind, new road, new mirrors, Pedestrian is about to cross, just check the child doesn't follow the adult. Back in the mirrors. At the roundabout, our intention is to turn right. Centre mirror, right mirror, right signal. Well sighted, but we can see a black car coming. They're turning around, but the blue car behind is going ahead. Making an attempt to go round this disc. 20 zone, checking the mirrors, traffic calming. Residential area with traffic calming. We're on a bus route and we have temporary road work signage again. So the road is going to narrow from the other side. See the post, postie off to the right there. roadworks to the near side. There's a postman and there's his colleague. Quite often that's happening, they work in pairs and they walk across the road. As we've seen on the uh, DVSA highway, uh, has, sorry, has a perception. So the road is going to narrow from this side. It only appears to be the little green bollards there. But again, just approaching caution. We're up to this maximum speed limit for this section of road anyway. And at the end of the road, we're going to turn right and we'll see the 20 zone comes to an end here and it becomes a 30. So mirrors, signal, position is to the centre line. Plenty of room for other people to go to the left. Rolling first gear on approach as we confirm our view. New road, new mirrors. There's a bag or something in the road. A polythene bag it appears to be, but we check our mirrors and just try and keep our tyres off it. So we're sure what it is. And even if it's a bin liner or something like that, that can get whipped up around a wheel and then start affecting your steering. So, um, good to avoid that if we can. These traffic lights, we're going to turn right. Checking the mirrors, signal. There is nobody behind at the moment. But for the benefit of people from all other directions. So it's acceptable with a solid round green light to move to the centre position and wait for our gap to open, but we cannot turn until that gap is there, which it is now. We exit into lane one of the two. New road, new mirrors, 50 mile an hour speed limit, so let's get the car moving along. Take the 
second exit. So you've got the sign for Dock Gate 20, just checking the mirrors, we've got the cyclist crossing. So Dock Gate 20 is our intended course. See from the board here. And ahead would normally be left hand lane. As we can see from the road markings and the board here, Dock Gate 20 is indeed this lane. So we're in the correct lane. But we're not signalling yet because when there is a an exit before the one we want to take so there's a um an immediate left hand exit and so if we were going to take that exit we would be putting a signal on however um there is actually a left hand junction where you can probably just see the van over there at the moment um, so we would delay any left hand signals if we're going to use one until we pass that to avoid any confusion. It is a no entry, as the sign says there, um, but generally it's preferable to reduce any risk of any confusion because other classes of road user might not view the road as, as we do and might not think, oh, yeah, that's a no entry. Um, so in that situation, just delay your signal. But just to confirm, our intention is not to turn first exit left. We're going to go ahead. So that will be the second exit. Frequently scanning for other road users filtering through. So motorcyclists are cyclists. And we're just aware that we've got an L car ahead of us. So does appear to have an instructor um, and a pupil in it so new potentially a new driver so we're going to give them time to move off don't know what level of training they're at at the moment but uh, I think down at Millbrook they've uh, had quite a bit of training you'd hope Lights are changing, three mirror sweeping as we prepare the car. You can avoid misguided courtesy of um, inviting the other uh, car to pull out and to cause confusion. So, the L car has gone off to the left, first exit signalling as we described, well time signalling. We've positioned into this lane, and so we've now just passed the exit before the one we want. So, this is our time to mirror and signal. Holding back on the large vehicle. Yeah, view confirming the lights are still green, checking to the left, nobody's overshooting that. And we've then got some pedestrians crossing. We cancel the signal as we're in the new road, but then immediately mirrors and reapply the signal as we take this left, keeping it out of the hatched area, noting it's a one-way street. Just having a little look at there's an interesting um, double giveaway here. See, we've got a giveaway that we're just stopping at now, but then the green hatch markings, and as you can see from the left, a cyclist is approaching. So we are giving way for cyclists in the cycleway that has just crossed our path. The white van ahead of us is at a second giveaway, so you can see the giveaway sign there, um, and that is giving way to people on coming uh, from the right. So cars and, and the black van there that's coming from, from the right very easy to get fixated on the giveaway sign and miss this first giveaway sign um, and it's obviously crucially important that we don't because that's relating to cyclists crossing our path unfortunately the traffic flow has caused our van to stop in an awkward position um, We could be making some progress here, but nothing we can do about that at the moment. We might just be very mindful as we've been discussing the cyclists. Before we move off, we must be giving way, so we need to be checking. Very active. Here comes another one in high visibility. So, there we go. Got eye contact. Great. At least the van behind wasn't aware of that. But they were keen to tell us with their horn. So 
cyclist is now taken to the cycle way. So with um, with COVID uh, COVID situation, we're seeing um, a lot of more pop up cycle lanes to encourage us all to get out and um, get healthy and get distance from each other rather than travelling in vehicles. So this will become much more common. So we need to make our observations um, very strong on that. exit to Dockgate 20. We've then got two stubby lines which are actually um, the on-slips and then we have the Millbrook Park exit which is where we're going and then beyond that at about probably a four o'clock clock face reference we have the A35 and Fairham. So if we look at the road markings if we want um, to take the A35, we should be in the right-hand lane. For everything else, we should be positioning in this left-hand lane, um, which then, as we cross through these traffic lights, becomes uh, the centre lane. So hopefully all of that will become clear. right lane just for clarity the right hand lane is only if we are going fully right to the A35. Now we're three mirror sweeping again important to do that again if you do do your observations early. So I can clear the junction just In the mirror there is space just to ease myself around. So we're looking to make safe progress. So that was acceptable as long as I checked my mirrors. Um, there's no point in sitting, waiting. Um, you shouldn't, you, even if the lights are green, you shouldn't cross the line if you can't clear the junction safely. In that case, obviously the back of the lorry was sticking out, but having checked my mirrors, there was nobody behind, so it was quite acceptable to, um, to get on with it. Just being mindful, we have got a large articulated lorry as we've seen that will be going round and round about at the same time as us. So just be aware of that driver's blind spots and the extra room they will need to get such a large vehicle and an articulated vehicle around that. So be very mindful. So we can now see the driver in their mirror. Me a degree of confidence. This is quite a small car. But again, you wouldn't want to be putting it and they're turning up, but you wouldn't want to be putting your car down the inside of it until you were very sure of the course it was going to take. Left mirror, left signal. The 
motorcyclists quite legitimately filtering through. So we're looking for when we scan in our mirrors. As we said before, it's fine to cancel your signal if we're waiting for a long period of time so it's not clicking away as a distraction. Um, but before moving the car, you don't want to reapply it. If a cyclist was to come down my inside and they thought I was going straight ahead. And in fact, I'm turning, that's when things can come astray, so that's why signaling is so important. Three mirror sweep, popping the signal on. And the signal. At the rate of the back, our intention is to go ahead, checking the mirrors, not signaling on approach, signaling on exit. Position of safety away from the young pedestrian and the um, electric scooter. adjustment to our positioning it's reasonably narrow here but there's your view really view so we no need to bring it to a stop at the giveaway lines we really shouldn't bring it to a, an unnecessary pause at the giveaway lines any car there were no cars behind us but had there been they wouldn't have been expecting us to stop there they would have been making the same judgments as we were looking to the right seeing it was clear we suddenly bring the car to a stop for no reason and it can invite the rear end so for that reason it would be viewed as undue hesitancy. Um, the mantra for roundabouts, when there is a view, let's be clear on this, if there isn't a view, if it's a closed, route, closed view roundabout you can't, but when you've got the view you are preparing to stop but looking to go. So here I'm off the gas checking my mirror so I could stop if I needed to, but I don't so I'm going to flow straight on. subtlety of difference but be very clear if it's a roundabout or any other junction where you have a closed view and you can't see you must absolutely pause um, and take uh, take the moment to lean forward keep and breathe do whatever you need to do to get your view without attempts to flow a closed view junction but one that is open and you have your view get on with it take your priority if it is there to avoid causing uh, confusion and frustration to other motorists Next roundabout, our intention is to turn left by the Saints Pub where the car is emerging. So mirrors, signal, position again, there's not much adjustment, it's a reasonably narrow road, but we're in the speed phase now. Pedestrian has just cleared the road. Bus is a long way back, so we can flow. We're entering a 20 mile an hour zone and we're warned of it. Patrol, children in this area, lots of parked cars, it's a residential area with traffic calming, there's the school, that was a school patrol by the look of it. Lots of parked cars, trying to straddle the shoulders of these um, traffic calming humps to avoid it disrupting the suspension too much. here is closed so we've got to pause got to get our view we've got to hold and there we have that view we can 
make the turn. straight ahead we take the left of those two Side of this, being aware of this cyclist, left mirror, left signal. 